Hello there, and welcome to another of Andre's Artist Profiles. Now, most music lovers out there know the Isley Brothers at least for being the longest and enduring um, family group in the soul, funk, R&B genre for the past more than half century now, since they debuted in the late 50s with their uh, iconic song, Shout. But what a lot of them don't know is that uh, the Isleys actually emphasized generationalism, very importantly, in the early 70s. Uh, according to the William Strauss book, uh, Generations, which I often refer to in a lot of cases, um, the older Isley brothers, you know, Ron, Rudolph, and Kelly, uh, who died in 1986, uh, were all members of what were called the silent generation. They were uh, the generation that were teenagers or young adults during World War II, and were the 50s generation, essentially. James Brown was also part of the silent generation. However, um, some of the brothers in the family were baby boomers, and that included uh, Marvin, who was also recently deceased, and his brother Ernie Isley, a guitar player, uh, who is going to be turning 62 today. So I'm going to be talking about a segment of the Isley Brothers' career that featured Ernie Isley, and that starts with the 3 plus 3 combination. Now, the important thing, again, to know about that is the Isleys, at one point in their career were backed up by a young guitar player named Jimi Hendrix, and Ernie Isley was greatly influenced by his style as a guitar player. And when he joined the Isley Brothers, he bought a whole new dimension to their sound. And this is their first album, 3 Plus 3, featuring That Lady. Now, That Lady, often called Who's That Lady, was an enormously successful hit for the Isley Brothers, and one of their iconic numbers. This album has an interesting up-tempo folk soul rock sound. They hadn't really put their 3 plus 3 combination together that heavily. Uh, Chris Jasper, who's a cousin of theirs, uh, was a keyboard player, and his sound would very much become important on their next album, Live It Up. He bought this unique burbling, pumping, synthesizer type funk to their sound with the title song. And this is really when the 3 plus 3 sound really got together. And one of their last albums will be issued on CD, I should note. And they, of course, typical of this period, they did a great version of uh, Todd Rundgren's Hello, It's Me. Very much more seductive than Todd's more distant version, of course. But, you know, the Isley Brothers had a great reputation. There's Ernie right there in his butterfly stage costume. I love it. This album, ugh, well, any song that has Fight the Power on it is going to be amazing. This is the album, I think, that says probably the most about the 3 plus 3 era. The first three songs are up-tempo, dance, funk numbers, and the last three, including the amazing sensuality, uh, are slow jams, ballad-type songs. Now, uh, these songs were recorded on Tonto, the same synthesizer complex that Stevie Wonder uh, and Gil Scott Heron and Brian Jackson recorded a lot of their albums. So you hear a lot of great bass synthesizer textures in this album. And I, I love that Tonto sound, and this album is full of it. If you like uh, Gil Scott Heron albums such as uh, um, uh, Secrets, or Stevie Wonder albums like uh, Inner Visions or whatever, you will love this, right in that same league. The Isley Brothers had a much punchier, soulful feel, though, which was unique to them. Their next album was called Harvest for the World, from 1976. I love the title song because it's a great message song, and so is People of Today. This album has some amazing... It's a great full-on album. But I love the album cover because, you see, a lot of people of the funk era assume that funk artists just dress like this commonly. But this is basically their stage outfit. When you turn the album over, you have the Isleys in their street clothes. You know, I love that. The dual identity of the group. Uh, maybe suddenly just let fans know, hey, we don't dress up in those elaborate get-ups just walking down the street. You know, I love that. My friend uh, Henry Hopkins, who I'm going to send a shout-out to, uh, made that point to me as well. Picture of the Isley Brothers box set there. I had an import version of this I got in Canada, but I lost the cover, so I got this version with bonus tracks, which I don't mind. It's a live version of Summer Breeze, because this is an amazing album. You Still Feel the Need is another amazing song that I love from this album. Who Loves You Better? Uh, just an amazing 3 plus 3 record. Um, I don't know how many of you out there remember the Ice Storm of 1998, but that's when I got this album. Uh, the first album I ever actually heard by the 
3 plus 3 Isley's combination. And there's a song on here called Living in the Life, which is an amazing, steely rocker uh, going into a brief, a connected title song called Go For Your Guns, where uh, Ernie Isley gives this guitar solo that easily equals Jimi Hendrix. It's just an amazing funk rocker. You know, who says a funk band can't play rock, right? Check this out. And uh, The Pride is another great funk message song. And uh, Tell Me That You Need It Again, uh, Voyage to Atlantis, uh, I'm Climbing Up the Ladder, just amazing, hard, core, funk, rock. If you like Mother's Finest and that sort of thing, this is going to be right up your alley. Just an amazing, amazing album. Uh, okay, this is going to take a little explaining. Uh, this is a... Sorry for the jewel case damage here, but this is... Uh, uh, one of the reissues of BGO Records of two Isley Brother albums that I had on vinyl and cassette originally. Showdown, which is from 1978, which features an apparently live Take Me to the Next Phase, one of their most amazing funk jams. As an album, it's actually not one of their strongest compared to the earlier ones, but it's a pretty good album. The title track Showdown is actually pretty strong. Um, this is an album from 1981 called Grand Slam. I don't know why they put these two together, but they did. Grand Slam uh, is a unique album in that it starts out with the ballad songs, which are eh, kind of so-so, and goes into the more up-tempo songs later on the album, which are typically powerful. Um, among my favorites of those are Party Light, very much in the 3 plus 3 vein. All right, the next album after Showdown was Winner Takes All. A double album, um, kind of mixture of, of up-tempo funk and soul and, uh, and their 3 plus 3 sound and ballads. A little bit of a slicker album. Uh, my favorites here on this album would be um, I Want to Be With You and Liquid Love especially. I love the way the synth textures are on that particular song. And there's a song on here called um, uh, Dis uh, It's a Disco Night, Rock Don't Stop which probably got them into a little bit trouble with the anti-disco crowd. Is that, oh, disco is in the song. It's basically not that different from that lady, to be honest with you. You know, I don't find it to be. And this is just an amazing album. It goes a little long, but all the material is really good on it. At least I think so, from 1979. Again, the concept of, uh, you know, some of them wearing their more street clothes and performance things. This is one of my favorite Isley Brothers albums, which wasn't reissued on CD until recently. Go All the Way from 1980. Most of this album is hardcore funk. Go All the Way, Say You Will, Pass It On. Um, Don't Say Goodnight is an amazing funky slow jam, jam and The Belly Dancer. Really hardcore funk on this one. I should know that by this time, um, there were some creative differences that were starting to crop up among the older and the younger brothers. Uh, and they had another album called Inside You in 1981 um, during this time where they were kind of starting to have, continue to have their differences, but the music was still really good. Um, Inside You and um, Baby Hold On and uh, Love Zone are just amazing 3 plus 3 type funk. Ernie Isley delivers an especially strong solo on Love Zone. Inside You is one of my favorite albums uh, by them. The real deal is actually a great hardcore boogie funk album that was kind of unsung from 1982 before this. Under the Influence is actually a strong bluesy number. I really love that album. Mostly really hardcore funk on that one. I highly recommend you get this set from BGO. Of course, The Real Deal was eclipsed by their next album, the last of the 3 plus 3 lineup, uh, Between the Sheets from 1983. Um, there's a message song, uh, a strong anti-war rocker called Ballad for the F Fallen Soldier about Vietnam vets. Kind of in the line of Stevie Wonder's front line, which uh, features a very powerful Ernie Isley guitar solo. Uh, Between the Sheets, of course, is the song that this is, this is most known for. It's been sampled to death in hip-hop, but I'm not going to go into that. My favorite songs on here are actually uh, Way Out Love, Getting Over, you know, the up-tempo tunes, and the instrumental Rock You Good, which has a vocoder on it. Very strong boogie funk kind of numbers. This has been reissued since, but this is the old collector's choice. I got this at the old Ames store. Uh, again, like with Grand Slam, it begins with ballads, and then goes into more mid-tempo songs like the title track, and then hardcore funk later. In 1989, 
Ernie Isley uh, released his first, and as far as I know, only solo album called High Wire. Uh, while he's not as quite as strong a singer as his more famous brother Ronald is, he does have an effective, you know, soft, Shuggy Otis kind of vocal tone, you know. And most of this album is pretty rocked up funk, similar to 3 Plus 3 Isley Brothers, but he delivers a really nice ballad that's well written called uh, Love Situation on this album. Worth checking out. Uh, the next album is by the Isley Brothers uh, trio of Marvin, Ernie, and Ron called Tracks of Life, which was released in 1992. Not a bad album. Produced by Angela Wimbish, um, who was romantically involved with one of the brothers. I can't remember which one at the time. Okay, the first Isley Brothers I actually ever had and heard was this one, which I got as a featured selection from the BMG Music Club. It wasn't cheap, but I don't regret it. R. Kelly produced this album called Mission to Please. It has a really nice, slow, jam, funk, new jack kind of sound to it. Uh, very typically R. Kelly, but it really worked for the Isley Brothers. And there's Ernie right there. And he plays kind of both jazzy and rock guitar backing on this album. It's a great record overall. The Isleys in recent years have tended to go more toward the slow jams and less toward the up-tempo numbers, which, you know, I feel is a little bit stereotypical, but on this album they managed to get both in the same songs and just about right. Highly recommended. The next album, you know, this is an okay record, but, you know, the era of Mr. Biggs, I have to agree with my friend Henrique, is not my favorite. You know, it again, it kind of typified Ron Isley as uh, somewhat of a granddaddy or a Mac daddy, depending on how you look at it, to a lot of, uh, you know, modern slow jam artists. And I don't feel Ron is that way. Personally, if you ask me, I prefer Move Your Body, the first cut on this, which features more Ernie Isley. I prefer the up-tempo songs on this album. I never got much into the Mr. Big stuff, but that's the more recent, most recent Isley Brothers albums that I have. So that's uh, what I have for the Isley Brothers featuring Ernie Isley. And happy 62nd birthday to you. And as for the rest of you out there on YouTube who are enjoying these artist profiles, I will see you all next time.